Good evening. It is Monday, February 12th, 2018. It is 7 o'clock. This is the first meeting of February of the Speedway Town Council. I'd like to call this meeting uh, uh, to order. My name is Jeff Matthews. I am the president of the Speedway Town Council. Uh, with me tonight, I would like to introduce Councillor Eileen Fisher. Good evening. Councillor Jason Delisle. Good evening. Councillor David Lindsay. Good evening. Councillor Gary Rakes. Good evening. Our town manager, Jacob Blaisdell. Good evening. Uh, we've got with us also uh, Monty Combs. No, Sorry. thanks. I uh, appreciate it. How brother. can I forget you? Thanks. And Bob Clutter, our town attorney. Good evening. Our agenda has been posted, and we will be following that this evening. So first on the agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two, approval of the Town Council min uh, minutes dated January 22nd, 2017. Any changes or corrections? Hearing none, those will be approved. Item number three, approval of the memorandum of the January 22nd, 2017 executive session. Those minutes have been submitted. Any uh, corrections, changes? Hearing none, those also will be approved. Item number four, presentation of Citizen of the Month, presented by Connie Harris. Connie, would you please come ahead? Come forward, please. Hi, I'm here to present the February Citizen of the Month. The Citizen of the Month is given in conjunction with the Speedway Town Council and the Speedway Chamber of Commerce. And um, this person was nominated by three people the same week, which is unheard of. And they all nominated the same person. And this is Dr. Ishkabe, who is here this evening. So if you want to come up. Um, some of the things that people mentioned in their nomination is that he is always available and willing to volunteer in his community. He has volunteered for both the athletic um, departments and the junior and the high, junior high school junior high and the high school, the music department, um, he contributed to the Japan trip and a lot of other uh, community projects. So Dr. Ishkabe, if you want to kind of up here, and I'm not sure who's going to present the certificate. Jason is. So I will take a picture of that. If you want to go up there and I'll take a picture. Okay, ready? One, two, three. And um, from the chamber, we would like to present you with a $25 gift card to Dawson. So maybe you can go out with your family. And then I don't know if you guys have any questions or anything or? well we definitely and thank you and, and congratulations we we see you around town quite a bit you support our our youth and and we certainly appreciate everything you do so thank you thank i you appreciate it can i have a word as well if you don't mind oh please, please do. so i like to really thank everybody uh, i'm most humbled with this award um to tell the truth i can think of many more uh, more deserving uh, individuals uh, including the three who nominated me um, Tammy Smith is here, uh, Darla Berry and uh, Phil Isaac. I really appreciate um, all the things that they do on a daily basis in this wonderful town of Speedway. Um, thank you very much for the honor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item number five, request for lane restriction and road closure for Taco Tuesday run on May 15th. I think we've got Leo Connor yep. here <laughs> and Connie. Yeah, this is uh, an event that's going to be a Speedway Chamber and Speedway Running Club event uh, that will involve uh, bar or tacos and tequila. And it, we want it to be considered a race event for the town of Speedway. And it will be on May 15th. And it's Taco Tuesday Run. Is that what we're calling it? Uh, Taco Run Indy. Okay, Taco Run Indy. So Lee yeah. can answer any uh, we've met with Jason Deerdorf, um, discussed the route. Um, he was okay with everything. So if you have any questions, or Lee can go over the route. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for you guys' time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're looking at doing a course. It's on Saturday or Tuesday. That's different. Um, Tuesday, May 15th, so kind of the Taco Tuesday theme. Uh, started at 7 o'clock. We worked through. We had a different route that we were trying to use that we thought would uh, impact the citizens yet. 
less, uh, but we met with uh, Officer Theobald and Deardorff, and they uh, pushed us back to this route, which we're excited about as well. This is similar to what we do in August for the Hops and Flip Flops 5K. The only difference you're going to see, because uh, we're trying not to repeat uh, Allison and Gilman, is we're going to turn down uh, Speedway Avenue off of Lenhurst and do a little out and back on Speedway Avenue and then get on the trail that's parallel to Crawfordsville and go back to Maine. Uh, so that's about the two-mile mark. So that's the one change from what you're used to us racing um, in August. Uh, we're expecting 500-plus, so it should be a good event that brings a lot of people to Main Street on uh, Tuesday night when it's – I know May's crazy busy, but when we talked to Tacos of Tequila and we talked to Daredevil, which is where we're going to base it, they were really excited about a Tuesday night because it's fairly dead on Tuesday night. So um, make some fun stuff happen, working with Connie. Um, so the proceeds going to the Speedway Trails, which we're always excited to work with them and keep things moving on the trails. Um, yeah, so just have a, the cro uh, road closer wise, Gilman uh, from like three to ten is the main biggest chunk that we're requesting to close. Um, we'll be mind mindful of businesses that are open at three, obviously still, and and work with them. We're mainly right in front of Daredevil, and then as we can take over a little bit more, we will. And then we've got the single lane closures on 10th, Lenhurst, and North Bell Lane on Main from uh, 7 p.m. until 8:15. And we do a closure on the course at 8:15. And it's a rolling closure. And right? Yep, and it'll all be rolling, so cars can still get through when they need to, and that sort of thing. And we discussed um, it's a practice day, and we discussed traffic getting out of the track and everything like that. And they were comfortable with this route and the timing because we don't have to close very early, um, and they thought this would work. You may have said this already. Approximately, how many people? Uh, we're shooting for 500 first year. I'm uh, pretty aggressive, but we really like the idea. It's going to be a, a full taco bar at the finish line, so people get free tacos with their entry, um, drinks. Mariachi, mariachi band. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. So we, it's it's unique. Uh, tacos are trendy right now, and so we're going to kind of take advantage of that and have some fun in Speedway. So, Is is Speedway Drive, is it completely closed? Uh, Speedway Drive is not going to be – so basically it's Allison Avenue, I believe, is at the 2nd Street Inn. Um, on Speedway Drive, we're going to go up to there and turn around and come back. Uh, there's going to be two officers at both ends of that, so at Lenhurst and at Allison um, Avenue to help with traffic flow. We can cone one lane and go out and back in that because it's at the two-mile mark. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure how Jason wants to set that up, and I'm guessing being a first-year thing, and I don't think there's ever been a race that's kind of used that little uh, strip that we're – It'll be a little bit, I'd go with the flow that night to see how traffic is working. And um, are, are you hiring the officers? And, and yeah, yeah, so we'll pay for all the, all the off-duty officers. Um, I think we're going to be right at 13 officers for the night, um, which Jason will cover for us, and then we cut them a check. So Okay. We provide the town with additional insurance certificates, so you guys will get those just like we do for hops. Um, yep, I think that's about everything. I move that we uh, go forward and approve the request for lane rest re um, restriction and road closure for Taco uh, Run on uh, May 15th. Second. <clears throat> There's been a motion and a second to approve the request for lane restriction and road closure for the Taco Tuesday Run, which will be on May 15th. Uh, any discussion from the audience? Uh, any more from council? I have one more question. Mm -hmm. The packet pickup, is that all yeah. one day that night? Uh, we would like to do that on the other nights, but it probably would be outside of Speedway. So we're, we typically like, like Endurance House is a sponsor that we work with, so we might do packet pickup there uh, the night before. Being Tuesday, it's a little bit different, so we'll figure out what works the best to get the athletes stuff. Uh, and that has helps cut down on traffic at 5 o'clock here in Speedway. That's because of what I'm thinking with the track let, let letting. I know it's at a six. slow day. But yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Um, and we can work with Connie if there's a, a better site. Because we get our parking plans and stuff together, um, if we, you know, set up tents on the north end or south end or whatever. Or if best. we pull in a sponsor that's maybe not on Main Street or somewhere else in Speedway, we'll try to do a packet pickup so we yeah. can involve them. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, I call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Carries 5 0. Congratulations. Yeah, we'll see you on the 15th. Thank you. Yeah. Can, I, can I say one other thing? And I forgot to mention it before. I just want to encourage people to send either myself or Michelle Lighty um, people, your nomination for Citizen of the Month from the Town Council, from just our citizens in Speedway. Just maybe your neighbor or someone you know that does a lot of nice things for our community that people don't really realize. So that's the whole goal of this is just to acknowledge people that um, do a lot of special things for our community that a lot of people don't know. So um, 
you know, it's a nice program, but people got to know about it, and we got to nominate people. So, thank you. Thanks, Connie. Item number six, ordinance 1302, an ordinance establishing a $2.50 month, $50, 50 cent per month yard waste fee. Second reading. Easy for me to say. Jacob, yeah. go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I, at the last meeting on first reading, uh, we went through in detail, probably a little painstakingly, but I, I put a PowerPoint presentation together and we went through kind of different points and, and where we're at, as well as the financial details supporting uh, where the number came from. Um, I'm not going to put everybody through that again, but I think just as a reminder and a high-level summary, um, the yard waste program is something that we as, as the town um, handle and take care of. So it's, it's uh, our street department employees, it's, it's street equipment. This is, uh, it's not something that's contracted out. We've tried to do that in the past. I say we, it's before I was town manager, but they've, they've tried to, to contract this out. Wendell's worked on that in the past, and it's always been um, more expensive than what it costs us to, to handle and maintain the program. Um, it's a great program, benefits a lot of folks, even if you don't directly use it, uh, your neighbor or neighbors do, and it helps uh, people maintain their properties and keep things looking nice, which helps everybody. Um, last year, during the General Assembly, uh, the the large bill, um, House and Rule Act 1002, um, kind of called the, the gas tax bill because it, it increased gas taxes, but it also put some more restrictions around uh, what we do with the funds that we have um, for, um, that we get from motor vehicle highway account. And um, this is not really anything that, um, I guess the new legislation causes us to take a fresh look at where are our expenses and are we going to meet certain thresholds and that sort of thing. And this is really the only expense that we had and are incurring that um, it doesn't really meet the requirements <coughs> of the new legislation. So in order for us to continue the Yardways program, uh, we can't fund it from the funding source that we were using, which was um, called our gas tax, but, but road funding revenue. Uh, we can no longer use that. Uh, thinking that this is a really good program and knowing that a lot of people value it, uh, we wanted to keep it going, and so we've proposed a $2.50 cent per month fee that would become effective in April. And again, this is the second and final reading to enact the ordinance. Mr. President, I make a motion that we uh, accept Ordinance 1302 on second reading tonight. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 1302 on second reading. Are there any comments from the audience? Any from council? Let me make a comment, not really a question. I asked a couple questions at the last meeting. Um, this is a, a fee. It's a new fee, and um, this is a valuable um, service that we provide to residents, uh, residents only, uh, not to businesses. And um, I don't like a new fee, but I, I think it, it uh, warrants this because of the way the laws uh, were changed at the state. Um, in addition to that, the other reason I'm going to vote for this is because it, um, uh, I had a conversation with, with, with Jacob and our street department and uh, just public, public works in general. The, uh, the dollars that have been spent in this area are now going to be spent on uh, resurfacing roads, doing other things that, uh, that we also desperately need. So I'm in agreement with this, but just want to make sure that, uh, I state why. I'd also just like to make one comment. Monty, can this be put on maybe a bill or two before, just so the public's aware of it? I know everyone watches our meetings, mm -hmm. but for those that may not be watching, um, can that be posted on there? Maybe Jacob on the on sure. The, when's the when's the uh, when are we going to put this in place? Let me ask. April first. April first. April first. April first. Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. I don't know if there's time to get that done, but maybe Jacob put it on the. Yeah, and we'll we'll you know have the the press release and the, yeah. the okay. media blitz. We'll we'll get the word out as much as possible to cut down calls to Monty's office. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Item number seven, approval of claims and utility adjustments with our clerk treasurer. Bonnie. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, typical list of um, uh, 
um, claims for you today over a three-week uh, period instead of the normal two. That's why it seems a little higher in its own way, but from January 22nd to, or 20th, excuse me, to February the 9th. And I uh, would appreciate your approval. Mr. President, I move that we uh, approve the claims for January 20th to February 9th. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve claims. Uh, are there any comments from the audience? Any from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Approve 5 0. Monty, utility Thank adjustments? You. Yes. As you see before you, same period of time, January the 20th through February the 9th, we have a total of two adjustments <coughs> totaling $7.19. <laughs> Again, would appreciate your approval. Mr. President, I make a motion to accept the, uti the utility adjustments as presented this evening. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the utility adjustments. Uh, any comments from the audience? Any from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Monty, do you have anything else? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Item number eight, report for, from our department supervisors. We'll start with Tim Gropp, Economic Development. Good evening, Council. Just a few updates from the Economic Development side. Uh, just another note to the public that uh, the SRC has put the uh, 2.7 acres on Gilman Street that they currently own. Uh, there's an RFP for that that you can pick up either in uh, the clerk treasurer's office or by emailing me uh, at my uh, work email. Uh, it is open until Monday at noon. Uh, the SRC will be opening any, any bids they receive in the evening uh, for consideration. So there's still a little bit of time if anyone's interested to take a look at that RFP. Uh, the Wilshaw project's moving along. Uh, we, we've actually poured some footers out there, about 400 feet of footers. I shouldn't say we, I didn't pour any of it, but uh, <laughs> uh, they're working on the infrastructure, uh, working through a few surprises that have come up, but uh, they should be uh, putting some sewer pipe in. IPL continues to work on getting the, uh, the underground storage ready so they can bring the lines down. Hopefully that'll continue here in the next few weeks and we'll see those, uh, those power lines get buried. So we're excited about that. They've done most of the work through the road. Uh, they're obviously waiting until they have to actually put the wires through there, or the lines through there. And then they'll go back once it's uh, warm enough, they'll go back and redo all the um, pavement that they tore up. So, uh, do you have a question on that? Yeah, Tim, on that, uh, what's the projected uh, completion date on, on the Wilshaw, the two projects there? Uh, it, it, a lot of dependent factors. We're hoping that the, <coughs> obviously the apartments are going to move quicker. We're hoping that they're, if things really move over the summer, they could be close to done by the end of the year. Wow. Could go into uh, first quarter of next year. We're hoping to have the parking lot portion open by the end of the year. Hopefully there's doing finishes in the uh, apartments, but that's if everything goes well. So it should go a lot quicker once we get out of the mess that's caused, you know, all the surprises that have been in the ground, once they start going vertical, uh, the project will go pretty quick. And then um, we're still waiting. They're still working through some architecture and design issues on the, uh, not issues, but just completing all the uh, floors of the uh, hotel side. We're hoping that that gets started ho uh, early spring. Yeah. Normal April. things. Not Normal things. Nothing out of the ordinary. It uh, just takes a long time to get through and make sure everything's engineered properly and approved. So they're still working on that. So um, we should have a pretty good start on the vertical uh, before May on the apartments, which I think is important uh, to let everyone show that there's some nice things happening here in Speedway for the for the month of May. So. Uh, we'll keep uh, we'll keep everybody posted if there's any other closures or lane restrictions that come up. But beyond getting the IPL lines buried, there shouldn't be anything else outside of the project site that we're aware of. So things are progressing nicely now. And uh, just one other note, uh, where we tore down the building at 1426 adjacent to Barbecue Bourbon, uh, the lot's been going really well. Everyone seems to be really happy with the lot. 
we need to go back and fix the roof line. The roofs happen to be connected, so when we tore around the building, we kind of just left a bigger overhang there. Uh, we will be, we've informed the businesses in that block, but we will be shutting down the northernmost parking spots for just a day, maybe two if things don't go well tomorrow. <laughs> you always hope for the best and uh, prepare for the worst. So a day or two, uh, we reached out today and let everybody know uh, that we'll be closing off those lots while we fix that roof line. We had to get some special flashing because it was a unique situation. So um, that's our responsibility because we tore down the building and, and um, the roof needed cleaned up. So we'll be finishing that up tomorrow. That's it. Tim, can you talk about uh, the shopping center and how that's going and kind of completion on that? Yeah, uh, we don't have a firm completion date, but everything's going really smooth and uh, moving along on the sh on the Bricksmore shopping, the Speedway um, shopping center there owned by Bricksmore. Uh, the facades, you're starting to see some of the fa facades come together uh, and they're working on the interior portions. So, so all the exteriors uh, moving along well. I, I believe there's still... Um, at best, it'll be late spring, early summer when everything gets opened up. And they don't, for any reason, have to open up altogether. So once one's completed in occupancy, uh, they'll get that open. But, you know, once they get it built and everything's done, then they got to stock it and train staff and everything. So I'd be shocked if it's any sooner than uh, late spring for that. But uh, it's moving along well. And like I said, you can start to see some of the color schemes and everything on the facade. So we're excited. I think it's a really nice improvement to that area. So... Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, Tim. All right. Thank you. Next report, uh, Police Chief Jim Campbell. Good evening. A couple of updates. <clears throat> As of February 5th, we have a new officer, uh, Mark Ludwig, who comes to us through the Air Force. And, uh, you know, right now we'll put him into FTO. We, can't, we couldn't get either of our new officers into ILEA until June. So, you know, right now we're, you know, getting them through FTO, which they'd have to have anyway. Uh, secondly, the public safety meeting tomorrow, it's our first meeting. It's open to the public. Uh, you know, it's at the Brickyard Inn at 1.30. Typically what happens, you know, that's kind of an organizational, but kind of gives the start of IMS and you know the the whole race season so public's invited if people got questions uh, there's where you get them answered lastly we we're having kind of I guess you call it a meet our officers but our Citizens Academy alumni have been videoing officers and I don't do Twitter Facebook or any of those things but uh, at some point the, the one of them we just finished has had over 3,000 Facebook hits Yes, it's on YouTube, and but you know I, I think what it what if you want to see it on the computer, the neighborhood watch. If you go there, you can see it, uh, or any of those other social media. But uh, it, it's really just a chance to have a normal conversation or interview, if you will, from one of our citizens of Speedway, and you know talking directly to an officer. Uh, you know, we're not going to require guys to do it, but, you know, I think it's a real opportunity for people to get to know officers personally again, you know, through some of the questions. And, you know, it'll also hopefully develop into things like bicycle patrol and, you know, give the public more information about how that works or motorcycles or canine. And, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those positive media relations, social media things that, I think it'll do a lot for us. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Next report, Fire Chief Bob Fishburn. Going down. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. Um, also wanted to piggyback on what Chief Campbell said. It's that that time. I'll I'll be attending those meetings starting tomorrow, um, and we're just kind of gearing up for all of the uh, race events. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank Bob Clutter. You know, our attorney doesn't get much, you know, press, but uh, I, I appreciated having the ability to call him about an issue that we were having, and uh, he did a great job giving me advice, and we we got it taken care of. And you know, he's on retainer, so you know, he didn't he didn't charge me. 
At least that's what he said. <laughs> Monty, Monty. <laughs> 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 he turns oh, me. Okay. He, he turns right. me. He says, <laughs> and, and as I sit back there, you know, I, I just I want to pass out some compliments. I remember not long ago when the utility adjustments were in the hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars. You know, and the girls that work in Monty's office and Monty, I mean, what was the last one? Seven dollars and twenty cents. And I saw <laughs> Councilman Lindsay kind of snicker. That's because incredible. I expect zero. Bob. That's incredible. <laughs> And, and it's to be commended, you know. I, I see them because they do our, our benefits and all those sorts of things, but people don't get that kind of praise very often, and we're all a team, so I wanted to, wanted to say that. This afternoon, actually, got notification. I think I told you back in October or November about the award that the town of Speedway, not just the fire department and the police department, the entire town was being nominated for, and that's come around, it's been nominated, and it's the uh, Quick Clearance Response Award that's given by the Marion County Hazmat Task Force. I'm going to a meeting on the 20th, you know, I hadn't even told you about it, but uh, I literally got the email this afternoon, and, and it really is, it's Marion County Health Department, it's NDOT, it's the Marion County Hazmat, Hazmat Task Force, it's Health and Hospital Corporation of Marion County. They're all a part of this committee that nominated us for the spill we had on 10th Street. Uh, so I'll have more information about that, but I, I go to something on the 20th where they'll explain to me how that works and we'll make sure that we get our PIO and, and Trent, you know, police's PIO and really kind of give kudos to all of our departments because we all worked so well together that day. Um, that, I believe, is it for me. Oh, ran into one of the chiefs from IFD who has our two guys in the academy at lunch, and I said, hey, those, those Speedway guys doing okay? And two of the other recruits were actually in there at lunch, and they were like, oh, yeah, the two guys that lead us in physical training. <laughs> So our two guys are excelling, and not just in the PT. The, the instructors said they're doing very well. Chief Millhorn kind of keeps an eye on that and gets emails back and forth. And our companies, once the weather clears in March, will actually be getting to go over and be a part of some of that training, which is kind of our contribution. Because Wayne Township and IFD, they don't charge us a penny to put our guys through the academy which is pretty incredible when you think about it. So because it's close, we're able to give them manpower and, you know, a reserve engine or whatever they might need. But, uh, you know, when a guy goes through the academy, I think it cost IFD close to $2,800. Now, now, we equip them with those things, but it's just kind of a neat partnership that we have with the Marion County Department. So I wanted to make sure you as the council and the public knew that. Lastly, I wanted to ask the public to really help me. Uh, we, we have great citizens that really do have legitimate concerns. And I think Chief Campbell admitted, you know, Chief Campbell and I aren't big Facebookers, uh, Insta mail or whatever, you know. That's just not our thing. <laughs> I know it's Instagram. But, uh, but we literally have very, very easy accessibility by a telephone. Uh, you can you can get a hold of us through the website. I know that Talk of the Town recently they publish our office phone numbers, and I really encourage you to contact us with concerns um, because you'll get a quicker response than if it's on social media, a complaint or something. You know, we want it might be accurate too, right? And it might be accurate. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean. Honestly, um, Councillor Rakes and I have spoken about this, but I, I really do think you'll get a better response, and it, it allows you to really talk openly about what the concern is and not try to figure out how to put it on a social media platform that really isn't intended to be used for that. And, you know, it's, it, some, of, some of them are very good. Some of them, I don't know, they come from left field. But honestly, I don't see some of them, so I can't address them. But if you call... If you call my office phone, I will always get back with you or the person, our inspector 
or the assistant chief, whoever's in charge. Of it. And I know it's the same for Chief Campbell, and I know it's the same for Wendell. He and I have spoken about it. I know it would be the same for Deb, you know, same for Jacob. So please call us and utilize those avenues. And then by all means, if you don't get answers, get with your council person because I know you guys represent those people and, and we'll get it taken care of. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Chief. Uh, next report, uh, Public Works Director uh, Wendell Walters is under the weather. Uh, so we'll have Mike Hess come up and give uh, Wendell's report. And uh, Well, I, I, Mike is not going to give Wendell's report. I've got a couple of things okay. that I'll include. Right. But I just wanted to, to take that uh, that time slot there. One of the main things Wendell was going to do was, was introduce Mike Hess. Mike is our um, brand new Waterworks Director, uh, or sorry, Superintendent, Water, water Superintendent. Water. Um, he is, uh, well, just introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Mike Hess. I come from southern Indiana, North Vernon. Uh, I've had 23 years experience there. Eight, the last eight is superintendent for North Vernon Water. Uh, North Vernon was very fortunate in the fact that we got a little close to $10 million in into in projects in the last uh, eight years that I was there, and uh, the big majority of that was grants. And so we made a lot of improvements. Very proud of that that system in North Vernon. And um, I look forward to working with you all. Everybody here, let me say, has been great. I had open arms. I uh, I couldn't be more tickled to, to work for any any place else. That's great. Great. We're, we're proud uh, to have you on board. Thank you. Uh, as far as reports go, uh, number of main break. Do you want me to? Sure, go for it. Go for it. Jump right in. I mean, and, and and this is indicative of how. I mean, he, 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 he hit the ground break. running and, and he's diving <laughs> right in. Absolutely. Uh, working with uh, Wessler on some uh, upgrades. Uh, the, the tank, metal wood tank, has been painted, and uh, uh, a lot of nice projects happening at the water plant too. Yeah. Right. Mike, yeah. I, th I think you were. We didn't hear you. How many water main breaks have you had? We've had six so far, okay, and, and uh, kind of cool. I guess last year they only had three. Uh, we've had a couple issues with fire hydrants getting hit and uh, some some other things going on out in the system. But uh, all in all, it's not to be unexpected this time of year. You may, I'm sure you're all aware of it. We're, and we're we're out there. I got a good crew. They're, everybody uh, everybody's done a good job. Excellent. Great. All right. Welcome aboard. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Parks and Recreation. Tammy Smith. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I want to mention two weeks ago I went to the IPRA conference, and I really enjoyed it a lot. I made a lot of connections and um, did some networking and uh, the thing I found really interesting everywhere I went when they saw my name tag where I was um, multiple times a day I was hearing oh my gosh Speedway all the improvements they're making it's awesome so that was kind of cool we're known I mean these are people from all over the state not just the surrounding counties but southern Indiana northern Indiana um, so that was a great experience and I enjoyed that um, last week I met with Mr. Bennett at the high school and um, coordinating with him to start getting the summer programming schedule um, tied down and so hopefully I'll have some dates on that soon we'll just kind of mirror like last year um, so looking forward to getting that out we'll probably open the registrations I'm hoping to open the registration sooner than we have in the past um, because uh, other parks areas any parks already has their registrations open they've had them open since at the end of last year so um, I'd like to get that kind of out there a little sooner um, and then I'm working on the sponsorships for the summer concerts and the other thing I'm excited about we kicked off a logo contest with the digital art students at the high school um, so they're all working on that and on March 16th at their convocation is when we'll determine who the winner is um, and I am still looking for a few more judges if anyone is interested um, let me know I would love to have a couple council members or attorney or Monty um, be <laughs> a, a judge um, and that's really all I have today. I don't think she wants Any to questions? <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Great work.
<laughs> Next up, report from our town manager, Jacob. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Away. Uh, I will also be at the safety meeting for at the track uh, tomorrow with uh, both of our chiefs. Uh, so just put that out there. Um, wastewater grant was officially submitted to Okra. Happy to say we got that in. Um, it takes a lot of folks gathering a lot of data and information to get those in. So appreciate all the employees, particularly at the wastewater plant, that uh, worked to help us get that submitted. We should hear back from Okra. Uh, in April, <clears throat> so stay posted there. Um, B and O Trail. Uh, this is a project we've been talking about for a while. Uh, very exciting for us in the town. Had the pre-construction meeting this morning, and uh, they're looking to get started on actual construction in early April. And um, we uh, we're, we're particularly fortunate. They were uh, they're going to be able to start on the east end. So basically by Main Street and then work their way west. Um, we have that car race thing going on in May, so they're going to try to get that portion cleared up and then work their way west and kind of be out of the way and have that all cleaned up by then. So uh, fingers crossed that weather and other things don't, don't get in our way and keep that moving. Um, IPL, Contractor Right Services, I mentioned this at the last meeting. They are out and they are working. Uh, if you have uh, questions, concerns, problems with, with right services, highly encourage you to first contact IPL. Uh, if they can't resolve your issue, by all means, please reach out to my office or, or any other contact you have with the street department. Um, but uh, just be aware that they're out in the neighborhoods. It is IPL. Uh, and uh, like I said, contact them first, and we'll help out if, if there are the concerns or brush or, or other issues you might have. Uh, and then last but not least, also mentioned this last time, Speed, Speedway crews are, um, it's, winter's a busy time. This is my first time as town manager going through the winter, and I'm finding just how busy. Uh, you think, oh, it's winter, um, maybe you run the plows every now and then. Uh, I think we've had a particularly active winter so far. Um, even when it doesn't seem like snow and you're not making a big deal out of it, you can still get some rain and then some freezing, and so these guys are out at all hours. Uh, and then after they get done sort of clearing things, they get to go out and work in the cold to, to patch up all the potholes that start showing up. Um, but they're doing a great job, so appreciate all their efforts and work. As a reminder, if you have uh, a pothole in your area that, that uh, hasn't been filled or, or needs to be corrected, the number is 317-246-4141. Again, that's 317 Two four six four one four one, and they'll get it on the schedule. We were able to get some hot asphalt um, last week. I think it was late last week, two weeks ago, late a couple weeks ago. Um, tough to get those open in the winter, uh, so we kind of work with others around us to get a big order together so we can start patching. And uh, I think the plan is to try to do that again towards the end of the month. Um, but so if you, you make sure you uh, let us know if you've got a pothole that needs to be patched and the next time guys are around, we'll get it fixed. That's all I have. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, next up, report from our town attorney, Bob Glutter. I have nothing to report, Mr. President. It's great to have short reports from your attorney, right? Yes. <laughs> Those are the best <laughs> ones. <Right. laughs> uh, before we get to uh, the council reports and, and my report, I'd like to yield um, some of my time to uh, Mike Simonson. Uh, he contacted me earlier uh, at the weekend. I'd like to, to have him come up, please. Good evening, Council. For those who don't know me, I'm Mike Simonson. I live at 1839 North Auburn Street. And I'm here tonight, I guess, to try and continue a conversation I started about a year and a half ago regarding the traffic concerns on Auburn Street. And first, I'd like to pass out a picture of an incident that occurred over the weekend. That probably helped spur my interest a little more to uh, come over and, and speak with you. And I'd also like to read a letter that my wife and I put together um, listing some of our concerns. <coughs> We'd like to address the ongoing issue of traffic and speeding on North Auburn Street. As I'm sure you are aware, the closure of Georgetown Road has significantly increased the traffic volume on our street. What you may not be aware of is the daily challenge that living in that area now involves. 
We are continually having speeding on our street. The addition of the speed radar detector simply became a game. We could see cars coming up the street and essentially accelerating to see how high a number they could post on the, the machine as they went by. We have been cursed at, flipped off, screamed at, honked at, and even driven around for simply trying to back into our driveways so that we could unload our cars. This has happened on more than one occasion. We have watched the same thing happen to our, our neighbors as well, and we feel this is not acceptable. We are currently the parents of a teenage driver, and our daughter will begin driving soon as well. The most terrifying part of our son driving has simply been driving with him down our street. We are thankful that our children are now older and no longer um, playing in the front yard because we would permit that at this point in time. The, the, the traffic on the street is so out of control at times that it's not safe for our, any kids to be playing out there. The traffic is something that a new potential homeowner would definitely take into consideration before purchasing a home on our street. Why would anyone want to deal with this? It is definitely not ideal if you have small children. In addition to the constant traffic, we are continuing to have trucks and buses and other large vehicles travel up and down our street in both directions on a pretty regular basis. Um, we also have seen IPS buses and other motor coaches utilizing Auburn Street as a cut through or, or whatever. Um, my wife called IPS, dis IPS dispatch a while back to find out why their buses would be using Auburn Street when none of our kids go to an IPS school. So they shouldn't be in our neighborhoods. The response she got from the dispatcher was, oh, they're probably just cutting through. And this is exactly what we're trying to discourage. We were assured this type of thing would not happen when Georgetown Road was closed, and it has. In lieu of the hit and run this past weekend, which you all have the picture of, traffic on Auburn needs to be addressed immediately before someone is uh, seriously injured or worse. Now, I'm not here pointing fingers at any departments or anything for the issue, and I do understand it's a public street, and we can't tell people you can't drive on this street. However, the speed and the lack of courteous behavior by many of them is unacceptable. And I hope that we can figure out some way to control this or address the problem. In addition, um, I wanted to add that there was a traffic study done in September of 2016. The report came out in October. And that traffic study, the conclusion was that the majority of the traffic on Auburn Street is neighborhood residents coming and going from their homes. The study indicated 1,000 more cars per day on Auburn Street versus Fisher Avenue. I find it hard to believe that every home in the area defined by Crawfordsville Road, Auburn Street on both sides, 25th Street to the north, Georgetown Road to the east, which includes the Cole, Cord, Main, and Baxter area. There's approximately 249 homes in that area. That would mean an average of four more cars are coming and going versus the rest of the neighborhood. I don't, I can't believe that. That all those, that's just going south on Auburn. That's from 20th Street to Crawfordsville Road. There's a thousand more cars a day than on Fisher one block to the west. So every other north-south street east of Lyndhurst also exit on the Crawfordsville Road. And Winton even has a stoplight to help people turn left onto Crawfordsville. So I can't believe the people would come over to Auburn to exit the neighborhood at a volume of a thousand cars a day more. So I don't know what the solution is. I'm willing to work with the town in any way I can, and I hope that we can come up to some kind of resolution soon. After the traffic study, we had a meeting. There were some ideas thrown around. 
None of those have come to fruition. I understand that was under a different town manager, so some of those ideas may have left with him, and there probably were not copious notes left behind with regard to that. So I'm hopeful to continue the discussion and see if we can make some improvements to make it a little bit safer on Auburn Street and Speedway. I'll be glad to answer any questions. If anybody has any? Uh, <clears throat> Mike, I'd like to uh, thank you and uh, your wife for, for your, your words. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a significant issue that we've got on Auburn. So um, I think we all realize that. Um, we haven't found a solution. I think we can come together and find one that works for everyone. I think my, my biggest fear, aside from accidents like this, is that we have a, a resident take, take the law in their own hands and uh, help stop traffic. I don't want that to happen. Sure. You can see from the impact of that picture, that wasn't somebody traveling at the posted speed limit or anywhere close to it. But. If I can suggest, can we, Jacob, maybe arrange something with you and the chief to sit down with Mike and others? Um, if council, maybe one or two of us would want to sit in mm -hmm. on that as well uh, to start that dialogue again sure. that stopped. I think that's probably maybe the first place to begin right. and start from there. And Yeah, and, and Chief Campbell and I met today. This incident happened um, late Friday night, so uh, we got together today and, and started <laughs> that dialogue up, okay. um, but can certainly include some counselors as well as Mike um, and put our heads together and, and think about some things that, that maybe have helped in the past and maybe stuff that hasn't, like sounds like posting up this, the speedometer there for people is just a contest to see how fast they can get it to go so that's maybe not uh, a okay. good approach but uh, we think about things that do work. Our kids use it with, with their bikes. Right. Yeah, there you go. See how fast <laughs> they can ride. Okay. So, um, so yeah. Uh, yeah I mean I, I think there's some things we, we can do. It sounds like some things have been more effective than others and we can we can figure out what's going to what's going to help the area. Yeah. I, I appreciate you bringing this to us mm -hmm. again and um, mm -hmm. uh, Unfortunately, it takes an incident like we had over the weekend to, to magnify it again. But uh, I live on 15th Street across from the park, and uh, in the mornings and evenings, it too can become a, a cut through because folks <coughs> want to avoid the light at 16th and Lindhurst. Sure. Makes sense. So I, I appreciate the uh, the issue. Not comparing that in any volume to what you have. Uh, they don't have five blocks, ten blocks, whatever it is, actual distance like you have from 25th all the way to Crawford Hill Road. Um, to, to build up that amount of speed even with with one stop sign in there um, yeah. but it's a real you know it's, it's a real issue and I, I don't think that personally I don't think it's one you know, silver bullet I think it's lots of uh, different things that are going to, to, to be implemented to, to help resolve the, the, the bigger issues and we're still going to have people that that aren't necessarily good citizens correct uh, that a lot of them probably don't, not living in Speedway the, the key is we can get folks that are not from Speedway <coughs> that are driving through Speedway, we just stop using that road as a through street. Uh, that would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for your patience, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor Matthews, for yielding your time. And it's a little different being on this side of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mike. Okay. Reports from Council members. Eileen, you have anything? Uh, nothing this evening. Councilor Jason Delisle. Nothing for me. Councillor Gary Rakes. Uh, just a quick announcement. Sometime in March, uh, keep your eyes and ears open uh, for an announcement from me. I'd like to to uh, to hold a just a public session, uh, citizens information meeting, sometime in March. I haven't set a date or a, a place yet, but I will do that. And uh, my goal is to try and do it every quarter. Uh, I've done this in past years, and last year's president, and a lot of other things going on. Didn't do it as frequently, but uh, certainly want to start that up again here in 2018. So. Just keep your eyes and ears open for, for an announcement. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Vice President David Lindsay. A uh, couple things. A uh, reminder on Saturday, February 24th at 9 a.m. at the Motor Speedway is our state of the town. Uh, everyone can come out and hear Gary speak and Jeff speak, and you won't hear me speak or Jason <laughs> speak or Eileen speak. Uh, and then I also want to thank uh, last Wednesday, I was on the other side of the podium. Um, and met our and residents came together 
uh, Big Red Liquors was proposing to come into the Meadowwood Shopping Center, and I had some residents contact me and others on their own went out, and they showed up and spoke, and Big Red withdrew their request for that store to go on up there. So I'd like to thank the residents that came together and spoke up when they felt they need, need, needed to be spoke up, uh, to speak up, and uh, just thank them for taking the time to come out and voice their opinion on that issue. That's all I have. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to add to all of that, um, I want to thank uh, Connie Harris and the Chamber for what really was a fun Mardi Gras uh, crawl. That uh, it was it was um, publicized television, uh, radio. I heard radio commercials for it. Um, obviously, it was very well attended. Uh, I may have made one stop, and that was as, as far as I could go, uh, pretty much pinned in one little area. But um, really want to thank that group and all the uh, merchants down uh, Main Street to make that happen. So um, with that, on that note, we will adjourn this meeting at 751. Thank you all. <laughs>